Hello, my friend. I'm so, so excited to dive into this week's podcast episode for you on this month's astrology. Oh my goodness, November's astrology is quite juicy, quite eventful. I'll be going through the major transits of this month, the things you need to pay attention to so that you can use the energy to your advantage. I will then also be going through the new moon and Scorpio chart for you because this is going to be the optimal time to manifest for this month. So stay tuned for that. I will then also be going through how the fear of being seen is keeping you stuck from more sales and clients in your spiritual business and how to change this. I will then end off this podcast episode with a tarot reading of what energy to embrace, what energy to let go of. So let's just dive right into it. Starting off with November 1st, this new moon in Scorpio. This is such a powerful new moon, a very intuitive one, a very intense one, I should add. I'll be coming back to the chart of this new moon for you after this overview, but I will just say, get ready. Then on November 2nd, we have Mercury entering Sagittarius. So Mercury is the planet of thinking and communication, and in the sign of Sagittarius, this is a bit of an uncomfortable spot for Mercury to be in traditionally. So this means that people could be quite blunt and very honest with Mercury entering Sagittarius. This can ruffle some feathers. This can hurt some feelings. However, this is also a very excitable philosophical energy. This is such a great energy to present work, to teach a course, to present any findings to other people. This is a very motivational energy, especially if you have to do communication work. Then on November 4th, we have Mars entering Leo. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because Mars will go retrograde on December 6th in the sign of Leo. So right now, whatever happens to you this month, you're going to be coming back to major themes from this month during April 2025. That's right. I know that's far in advance, yet because Mars is slow moving, this is really good to keep in mind. So any issues, especially around anger and frustration and work, you're going to revisit them next year. So we are already in the Mars retrograde shadow period. Now Mars in Leo is really this warm, passionate, dramatic sign. Expect a bit of drama during the Mars retrograde in December. If you haven't checked out your 2024 horoscope, I go through how Mars retrograde will affect you. You could go check that out. And in terms of the energy for Mars and Leo, this is a very driven placement for Mars to be in. This is a very creative energy. This can feel really uplifting. I really do see this as a really good boost for this month in terms of dating. If you are single, this is actually quite lovely and affectionate. Whereas Mars and Cancer was a little bit wishy-washy and a bit passive-aggressive in terms of the dark side, Mars in Leo can be a bit arrogant and self-centered. It could also be quite dramatic and hot-headed when it comes to the dark side of Mars and Leo. So keep this in mind. I really see Mars and Leo being this really uplifting energy for us, especially in terms of how we work and date. Then on November 11th, we have Venus entering Capricorn, and this is going to shift what we value and how we show love and affection. In the sign of Capricorn, we are then going to be valuing consistency, reliability, hard work, dedication. This is a placement where you're going to really feel better about anyone giving you acts of service. Maybe that's something you're going to show to more people. This is an energy of really valuing more traditional roles in terms of dating as well. In terms of healthy masculine energy, in terms of, for example, someone holding the door out for you, someone pulling your seat out for you, you're going to take notice of this and you're going to value these gestures even more. And in terms of work, we're really going to value building more systems and structures that save us time, save us money, and what makes more sense for us. What can we 
also prioritize in terms of mentorship because Venus in Capricorn really values wisdom from an older generation. And this is a great thing. Maybe you are more interested in mentorship or coaching or learning more about history or culture. This can also be a really great shift to pay attention to. Then on November 15th, Saturn stations direct in the sign of Pisces. So if you are a Capricorn or Aquarius rising, you can really be feeling this shift because Saturn is your ruler. If you're currently in your Saturn return, you could also be really feeling this shift if you have Saturn in Pisces. Yeah, this is going to actually help us move a lot forward in our systems and structures when it comes to how we connect spiritually to what is important to us, how we process our emotions, how we understand energy, and how we connect with others in terms of partnerships. Then on November 15th, we have a powerful, powerful full moon in Taurus. I'll be diving deeper into the full moon in Taurus chart for you later this month, so stay tuned for that. Then on November 19th, we have Pluto entering Aquarius. So this is really, really important. Most of November, this is the last time Pluto will be in Capricorn. Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. And Pluto will now stay in the sign of Aquarius until 2044. It's going to be a long time. This is going to make such a dramatic, dramatic shift. I talk a lot more about how this affects you in your 2024 horoscope. So dive deep into that because Pluto in Aquarius is really going to start some revolutions for us. We've already been seeing this through mass protests across the world. We've already been seeing this also with the growth in technology, especially AI. Pluto did enter Aquarius previously this year, yet it retrograded back into the sign of Capricorn. And finally, it will re-enter Aquarius where it will stay for 20 years, okay? So this is going to be the last time Pluto will be in Capricorn is this month. And I will say Pluto in Capricorn at the critical degree of 29 degrees. This is a mass, mass purge. We're going to get more secrets being revealed during this time. You're going to see a lot more chaos in terms of the downfall of capitalism. You could also just be seeing a lot of people that were in authority or celebrities or any type of really large structures being dismantled, right? We can also see this with boycotts throughout the last year with major companies. So keep this in mind. We could really, really see more of this destruction happening in November. Now, on November 21st, Sagittarius season begins, and this is going to really shift the energy into a more playful, fun, spontaneous energy. I'll dive deeper into that later this month. We also have Mercury going retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius on November 26th, and I'll be sharing exclusive horoscopes for Mercury retrograde for you. Now, those are the major transits of the month. I do want to point out on November 17th, just to give you a heads up, the sun in Scorpio will be opposing Uranus and Taurus, and this can feel really shocking. This could feel like a big, big shakeup. Keep this in mind for the 17th. This could give you a really big breakthrough. However, I just want to give you a heads up that this day can feel really uncomfortable and to plan ahead around this date. Now, going back to the new moon in Scorpio chart for you. So this new moon in Scorpio is happening at 9 degrees of Scorpio on November 1st at 8.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is actually quite a lovely new moon. Now, there is some intensity. We have the ruler of this new moon, Mars in Cancer, opposing Pluto in Capricorn. So this can cause some manipulation. This can cause some power struggles. This can feel really, really uncomfortable. You could be confronted by someone who is more passive aggressive or 
something where you feel as though you need to change in terms of your direction when it comes to work, how you take action, how you react to a situation. It's going to be really, really important for you to not be super reactive at this time because this can stir up some uncomfortable emotions. Now, some people could get angry with this energy, so keep this in mind. However, I do see this as a benefit of you really learning how to transform how you approach a situation. So this is really good to consider. Now, there are some really, really lovely aspects that I love for this new moon, which makes it really optimal to manifest. The first being is this new moon is in a trine to Saturn in Pisces. This means that we have a lot of support from Saturn to really think about our long-term vision and our long-term goals. So the intentions you set now can help you manifest for 2025. With this energy, we're really thinking about what do we want to feel emotionally in terms of our long-term future, meaning that how do you want to process your emotions and how do you want to feel? May this be more peace? May this be through more joy? May this be through letting go and purging any difficult, hard emotions, especially from our past? that is going to be really, really important right now. Now, we do have a lot of lovely support in terms of how we emotionally process things with this new moon. This is because we have a grand trine happening in this new moon in Scorpio chart. We have Mars in Cancer, trine Mercury in Scorpio, trine Neptune in Pisces, and this is also trine Mars in Cancer. So with this lovely flow of energy, you could feel a lot more intuitive. You could feel as though you're emotionally connecting to others in a very strong way. This could also feel as though you're emotionally dealing with situations and being more aware of what is coming up for you. I love this energy. This just feels as though you have a lot more support in this area. And I will say Jupiter in Gemini is still in a sextile to Chiron in Aries, meaning that there's some lovely, lovely healing energy we're still receiving from our friends. Maybe you're just feeling really uplifted or supported by your friends during this time. This is such a powerful energy of deep, deep healing in terms of any wounds around your sense of worthiness, around your desires, around your independence. Perhaps you're feeling a lot more uplifted in terms of asking for more help. And this is actually calling in some beautiful, beautiful support from the people around you. Communication is also really, really healing right now, especially communication and motivational messages that maybe you're listening to or receiving. The fact that you're listening to this is actually quite lovely in terms of your own healing journey and growth. So just know that I'm so proud of you for prioritizing that because that is so, so important to do right now. Now, what's also interesting is Mars in Cancer is also making a sextile to Uranus in Taurus. So we can get some shocking surprises. We could get some lovely breakthroughs with this new moon. This is going to really help us understand what we need to change in our life. Now, the last thing I want to point out with this new moon and Scorpio chart is Venus in Sagittarius is opposing Jupiter in Gemini. I love this energy. This is a really abundant, lucky energy. This can make us just feel a lot more excited to see our friends. This can make us a bit more philosophical and spiritual with our friends. Yet this could also help us amplify our communication, especially if you have your own business and want to connect to more people, more clients, this is the time to use this new moon in Scorpio for your benefit. And if you want help in manifesting, if you want to make new friends, if you want to discover how this new moon in Scorpio is affecting your chart specifically, 
then you can come join me and the Moonsign Creative community for a manifestation event. It's going to be a really powerful ritual to call in new energy. The price of the community will increase next month. So if you want to save on the membership, now is the time to do so. And also we're meeting for this new moon in Scorpio on October 30th. So Halloween Eve, which is super, super fun and exciting. This is the perfect way to spend your Halloween Eve. A replay is also going to be available if you want to do the ritual at a later time. May that be on Halloween. May that be later on this week. Now, moving into the topic for this week, I want to talk a bit about how the fear of being seen is keeping you stuck from more sales and more clients in your business and how to change this for 2025. This is going to be super important, especially if you want to grow your business in 2025. The fear of being seen really hits home for me because I have Chiron and Leo. And if you don't know, Chiron and Leo really represents a deep wound around being seen, a deep wound of not feeling seen, and feeling as though you can't express your authentic self and feel loved for it. This was a wound I really had to heal in order for me to grow my business. And I will mention, it's taken me years of mindset work, of energetic work, of strategy to be able to grow my business to where it is now because now I'm consistently reaching millions of people on my Instagram, on my TikTok, and I'm really calling in my dream clients. The past clients I've had have been so amazing and have really shown me how powerful being seen can be. Now, the reason why you could have a fear of being seen is growing up, maybe someone said something to you that really hurt you when you try to express yourself or you try to show your creativity or you felt like you weren't truly seen by your parents for who you are. Now, I want to mention that 80% of this is mindset work. If you do not know how to get into a good mental state for yourself, if you do not know how to clear out past hurt and pain in terms of your energy, in terms of your beliefs, if you do not know how to rewire your subconscious mind, this is going to feel really, really difficult for you. This has been the most transformative thing for myself is understanding and learning how to rewire my subconscious mind so that I can feel more safe being seen, to put out my creative work, to help more clients, to really grow my business so that I can help them through astrology and really help people learn to love themselves in a deeper way. Now, I do want to mention what's helped me the most has been overnight affirmations. I've made an exclusive video on overnight affirmations for you, specifically for love and money that you can listen to. So I'll leave that down below if you're interested. And also what's really helped me is staying accountable, having mentors that have kept me accountable to my goals, who have consistently shown up for me, who have taught me how to show up for myself and understand how I'm subconsciously blocking myself helping me understand my blind spots because everyone can miss their own blind spots, right? I see so many entrepreneurs and business owners try to do things themselves and hustle, 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 and then they just give up. I've seen so many astrologers just give up on their astrology practice because they feel like it's not possible for them. They're not getting enough clients to make enough money, yet part of it is mindset work. Yet the other part of it is strategy. And the thing is, if you only hire mentors that are focused on energetics and not seeing things in a holistic way, that's where things can really backfire. I've made this mistake before where I hired a coach and they didn't know a lot when it comes to business strategy. And I thought I hired a business coach, yet actually I realized they didn't have the experience that I needed for my niche and they didn't understand how to grow my business, right? So it's really important to hire a mentor for yourself. May that be selling courses, 
writing a book, having a creative practice. And that's where my biggest mistake has been in the past. It was still helpful, but it helped me understand that not one mentor is going to solve all your problems. Understanding this from the get-go is going to help you immensely. It's knowing that you have to show up completely to do the work for yourself. Now, in terms of being seen, the way that I was self-sabotaging before was me not posting my work consistently. This was me not posting as much as I knew I could be posting. This was me, for example, posting on TikTok, but not using the same video to post on Instagram because I was so afraid of what my friends would think. I was so afraid of what people from high school would think. Yet, to be honest, it's taken me at least two years to fully dissolve that belief. And now I know, and I don't really care what anyone else thinks. But it's so interesting how our mind plays tricks on us. This is why mindset work is so, so important. Now, the other belief I had that I had to change for myself to be more seen was that selling was annoying. Once I started to see selling as serving, that I can actually help someone if I told them, hey, this is what I offer you. This is how I can help you. Once I started to transform that belief for myself, that is when I got more sales. Who knew? Because often in society, we think, okay, selling kind of refers back to that sleazy salesman in the 1950s who's selling like used cars. Who thinks of the used cars salesman in Matilda? Because that's what I think of. And that's something I had to transform and release because once you start seeing selling as this empowering act for yourself to help more people, to really focus on, wow, I can transform someone's life with this. That is when your business starts to take off. I've made over 100 sales this year because I am repeatedly showing up for myself. I am repeatedly being consistent. This is the most consistent I've ever been. And I was pretty consistent before, but I was just even looking back to previous posts I've made on Instagram and I've doubled the amount of content I've been posting. And there are some mentors who say that's not important or you can sell without being seen on social media. That is 100% true. You could sell in different ways. However, being seen on social media will get you even more opportunities. I've had at least 50 companies reach out to me to partner up with me. Now, a lot of them were not aligned for me. However, it showed me what was possible for me. It showed me that I can help more people. I've seen my videos reach so many people and the fact that I can help so many people at once through social media just shows me that I'm in my purpose. And that feels so fulfilling to me. I love, love helping people through social media. It actually is so exciting for me. And the thing is, people don't know how much strategy goes behind this. My background is in brand strategy, and I continue to help my clients with brand strategy in my Boldest You mentorship. And I'm currently using my master's in digital media to help my clients succeed to help people build really authentic but also strategic plans for their year ahead. So I'm helping businesses with this through astrology because you need to understand your energetic blueprint of what would work for you, what feels good for you, what feels exciting for you, yet also through mindset work, energetics, social media strategy, brand strategy, because no matter what you think, being seen by a million people will give you opportunities and will help you heal more people. It will help you empower more people. It will help you immensely. Now, in terms of using astrology to your advantage for this, for me, it was really understanding my Chiron and Leo to really tap into it because Chiron can be your superpower. It is your deepest wound. However, it is something that you can help others with. Now, for myself, it also showed me that this was the reason why no one thought I was a Leo. I'm a Leo son. No one I've met has really seen me as a Leo, and this is because of that Chiron energy. However, 
Once I started to understand this, I started to tap more into my Chiron in Leo, my Sun in Leo, but also my Midheaven in Cancer. My business is very intuitive. I really, really trust my intuition in terms of what direction to take with my business. I also recommend looking at your Mars sign in terms of how you work. I've seen this for my clients because once we figured out their Mars sign, it helped me understand how to mentor them better. And it also helped them understand how they better work and which business partnerships are actually better for them. I would also recommend looking at your chart ruler because that is gonna show you what your main focus is this lifetime. Your chart ruler is such an important part of your birth chart. And I'm gonna leave a freebie on how to grow your business using astrology down below because I've gotten such great feedback from that freebie. It honestly has helped people get some really major breakthroughs. So you can check that out down below if you're curious. Yet, yeah, I want you to use this information and really see how are you stopping yourself? Do you have a fear of being seen? In what ways are you stopping yourself? Is that not posting something that you know you could post? Is that telling yourself that, no, I'll post later? Is that procrastination? That could also be you self-sabotaging. This is what I help my clients with in my Boldest You mentorship. And I'm really excited to announce that applications are open for 2025. The first year of the Boldest You mentorship program went so well. My clients are doing amazing, amazing, amazing work. One of my previous Boldest You mentees not only three times her confidence in her mindset work, her energetics, her social media strategy, selling, but she also was able to move to her dream city of New York. She wanted to move back for quite a bit of time and she was able to make that happen for herself. Another one of my boldest you mentees got her dream photo studio. She's wanted this dream photo studio for 10 years. She was able to get it and understanding how it could actually be an asset for her and how it's helped her so much with her creativity, but also helping her clients. She also exceeded her monthly income goal because she was doing consistent mindset work. She was always coming into our sessions together, asking questions and asking for help and support. And I was able to give her more resources for her mindset work. I was able to help her with her energetics. I was able to help her see her blind spots. And she completely blew my mind in terms of her growth this year. She also started to write her own book, which is something she's wanted to do for years. And she's also had more time to be present with her son. Now, my other boldest mentee is doing phenomenal work. She's getting more clients. She's getting more sales. And she was having a hard time with this at the beginning of the year because she was still healing from an injury. However, working with her, she has completely transformed her mindset. She's starting to talk to herself in a kinder way. I've seen her stop herself and really speak to herself with more love and compassion. And this has really helped her shift her perspective of what is working in her life and has helped her gain more clients from it. Now, of course, I've also assisted them based on their specific astrology. There is one client I had where she started to get 10K clients because she knew what to focus on. She knew that her focus that year was one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. So I share this because I hope it inspires you to know that the work you're doing for yourself, the mindset work, the energetic work, learning the strategy, but then also learning more about yourself and your astrology is going to completely transform your business. And knowing how to connect them all together is a very, very important part of growing a wellness business. If this is something you want help with, you can apply for the Boldest You Mentorship for 2025 and work with me one-on-one. -on -one. This is such a transformative program. You can learn more about the program down below. I'll leave a link to it. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. Now let's get into your tarot reading for this month. So the first card out is the Ten of Swords Reverse. Oof, okay. <laughs> this is a release card. You're trying to let go of something this month. Now, 
you could have been really overthinking a past situation or you could have felt like things were just feeling really heavy for you energetically. I do really love that this card is reversed. So this means that you already know there's a lot for you to clear. Maybe that is limiting beliefs about yourself. Maybe that's just feeling overwhelmed with your to-do list. Maybe that is releasing what people think of you. But this is the month to really let this go. I see this energy as Pluto in Capricorn energy where you have to really let things go. The next card out is the Devil card. Now, this is a card of intensity, of obsession. This makes sense with Scorpio season. I will say this can be a theme throughout Scorpio season. I want you to assess which relationships are good for you. Are you still stuck in codependent relationships? Are you still stuck in relationships that you know don't support you and your growth? Are you still stuck in relationships that don't make you feel that great? This is a card to really cut things loose with those relationships. I also see this as a good sign to do a cord cutting ritual. We've done one in the Moon Sign Creative Community that you can check out. Yet you can also find one on YouTube as well. This is a good card to remind you that these obsessions aren't going to help you. I also see this card as the energy of the Mercury retrograde as well. So not only Scorpio season, but also getting stuck in the past. So whatever you can do, may that be meditation, journaling, doing things that really help you release and let go and stay present, that is going to help you so immensely. The next card out is the Queen of Pentacles reverse. Now you could feel this month that maybe you're not happy where you're at in terms of your finances. Maybe you're feeling a bit discouraged or you feel unworthy of receiving more. May this be more love. May this be more clients. May this be more money. This is a card to go within and to really nurture yourself in a very practical way and take care of yourself. So for example, cooking yourself a really healthy meal, taking time away from others and just resting if you need it. This is a card of seeing what have you been missing in terms of taking care of yourself. Are you putting away your laundry? Are you going for those walks that you know are gonna mentally make you feel better? This is a good reminder card for that. Just remind yourself that you are worthy of being seen and loved for who you are. Very, very important. Now, our block this month is the Queen of Swords. So this is a very cutthroat energy. I kind of see this as Mercury in Sagittarius this month. Someone could hurt your feelings by being very direct, being very honest, being very blunt. This could also look like maybe you're setting so many boundaries and cutting out so many people, yet it's not allowing you to have more fun with the people you love. I do see a block maybe with a specific person where you just feel like things are just more cold and direct. I do think having a conversation with them could help. However, I asked for an advice card and we got the three of cups. So whatever the situation is with the Queen of Swords, yes, it's good to keep your boundaries. Yes, it is good to be clear about what you want and plan ahead. But don't be so, so strict on it. The Three of Cups as our advice card is to make sure you're having fun throughout the process. Make sure you are spending time with friends and nourishing your soul because that is going to help you so much in terms of just enjoying life, in terms of not only your business as well, because you can get inspired by your friends, but you could also just feel more loved and taken care of. So make sure you're prioritizing some downtime to celebrate and enjoy things with your friends this month. Your Oracle cards are release. So this is the month to purge, honestly, with Pluto in Capricorn moving into Pluto in Aquarius this month, you're purging. There's something you really, really need to let go of. We also got make space for it because if you're trying to call in your manifestations, but you're not removing stuck energy, 
you're not donating things you need to donate, you're not cleaning your place, you're still talking to your ex but you want to call in a more aligned connection, the Make Space For It card is here to tell you you need to let things go. You need to make space for better new energy to come into your life. You also got inhale, exhale, so make sure you're breathing, make sure you're staying present, make sure you're enjoying life and you're taking things day by day. Don't overwhelm yourself, but this is a good reminder card of taking care of yourself and your body. Now, I also pulled one last oracle card from the Cosmic Magic Oracle deck by Valerie Tejega, and this card is the Pisces card. So this is the month to really listen to your intuition. Trust your instincts. Trust the messages you're receiving. I'm going to read the questions that come with this card so that they can help you throughout this month. The first one being, when was the last time I listened to my intuition and what was the outcome? The second one is, what are some synchronicities that I've noticed lately? The third one being, how do I feel in my body when my intuition is trying to tell me something? And how can I pay more attention to this when this feeling arises? This is a really, really great question, right? Because oftentimes we say, listen to your intuition, yet if you do not know how to listen to your intuition, I want you to practice. You could practice through getting an oracle deck or a tarot deck. You could practice by seeing how your body feels. How are you receiving certain messages that may be guided by your spirit guides, by your ancestors? How are you soaking that in? Are you paying attention to it? So I really hope this helped, friend. I really hope it helped. If you want to grow your wellness business in 2025, get more sales in a sustainable way without the burnout. You can apply for the Boldest You Mentorship with me for 2025. I'm only accepting three new people and I will be having an interview with these applications because I really want someone who is super aligned for the program. I'm just super, super excited for it. I love, love helping people with their businesses. And if you wanna join the Moonsign Creative community and manifest with us for the new Moon and Scorpio event, I'll see you there. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much for listening, friend. Just know that the universe has your back. And with peace and love, take care.